the story gets stinkier. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. So we've got an update to that crazy cheese explorer today. So about a month ago, this custom shop Green Bay Packers cheese head explorer showed up, and it was listed on a Facebook Marketplace ad as a one-off. Lo and behold, another one has shown up on eBay. Also being described, only one in the world, MVP choice. So what's going on here? Who's telling the truth? Technically, I think both of these people could be correct. <laughs> <laughs> which sounds strange, but let's go ahead and dig into this. So at first glance, this one appears to also be late 90s. It's got that style of case with the wedge for the headstock and the pink satin blanket. It's also done up all yellow. It's got the holes put in it. This one appears to have been played a little bit. However, if you look at it, it appears that this is more so a satin finish. And our serial number dates it to 1996, 299th day of the year. So if we go back over here to refresh our memory of what our serial was, this one was very early 1997. Now, a couple of commenters pointed out that this was like days before this team ended up winning a big game. So that would mean this one predates it. However, what a lot of people are not realizing is this one is not custom shop. This one over here is. Now, how can we verify that? It's real easy on this. It's got a custom shop decal on the back, whereas this one does not. But we also saw some of the other differences already, like this one being a satin finish, the custom shop being full on gloss. And I hate to say it, I really don't like this Gibson USA version because I wasn't necessarily sold on the custom shop either. But in comparison, the custom shop did way better because look at how cheap these holes look in here. They clearly just took a drill bit like this that has a really sharp center point to keep it anchored and then it drills away. You can still see how rough that is, the center point in it. This one, they didn't even bother going all the way through. It needs like some black paint or something there. However, one thing that it has going over it, it appears all the Green Bay stuff is just actually stickers. That's not necessarily underneath the finish. So if you don't care about the football affiliation and you just want a silly explorer in your collection, that is an option. But according to this seller, these two were presented to Brett Favre. And apparently there's a cheese flying V out there too. And he selected the flying V and then the explorer went to some regional sales representative. And then he recently passed and it was in his estate sale. Although it does seem rather strange that both of these show up at the exact same time? Perhaps there was an estate auction that had both of these. The good news is this one's $500 cheaper and they're open to shipping and offers. So good to know, there's more than one Cheesehead Explorer. But advertising them both as one of a kind? How are they still technically correct? One's Gibson USA, one's Gibson Custom Shop. Completely different caliber of instrument. But let's continue our fun tonight with a few other interesting finds. So I saw this Gibson Jet Atkins Double ST 1987 described in a charcoal sparkle finish. Now there's varying different models within the Chet Atkins series, but usually they'll look like this. However, there's other versions that don't have the sound hole to it. And they came in a plethora of colors from natural to cherry sunburst and straight up ebony. Now you'll notice that most of those had those really interesting star inlays. So naturally, when I see charcoal sparkle metallic and block inlays, I'm intrigued. The unique thing about these is the fact that they're actually solid body electric guitars, but they're built like a classical. You typically saw these in the late 80s, early 90s. Now I haven't tore one apart to really fully understand this, but I believe it's some sort of a pickup that works with all your electronics. But here you can see that beautiful sparkly finish and those inlays we were talking about. Then when we get to the headstock, it's a familiar open book shape, but it just says Chet instead of Gibson. Then you've got the redundancy of Chet Atkins on your truss rod cover. It's certainly interesting, so let's go to his description. He believes it's a very early Chet Atkins SST model, custom ordered in this finish with simply Chet on the headstock. He's never seen one like this, feels like a custom one-off. Well, I can tell you the serial number lines up as an early 90s example, and the construction of it, yeah, that definitely looks Gibson. However, rather than a custom ordered one-off, I think this is someone's project. A great way to tell inlay conversions is the 12th fret. The offset stars do not fall in the middle, so in order to convert your guitar, you have to make that 12th one bigger, and it just stands out like a sore thumb, and it says Kimo on it. So I'm betting somebody just modified our headstock here and gave it a custom refinish. So that's my hot take on it, but it kind of looks cool dressed up as a custom. But next to side trip off into Japan, Ishibashi listed a pretty interesting 59 reissue, listed as a 1999 historic. So we've got the ABR1 bridge, we've got the historic reissue style knobs, but I just fell in love with this top. Does it match in the slightest? Kind of. Like, this is definitely really nice, uniform, wide flame. This has very similar patterns, but it's a bit tighter and you've got the vertical wood grain complementing it. 
However, from a bit farther away, it actually looks pretty good. It reminds me of some of the really dark finished Heritage Series Gibsons, but this thing's been played. It's got a nice little patch of buckle rash, we've got Schaller strap locks, nicks and dings. The late 90s, early 2000s historics aren't the most accurate in the world, but you know what? They can be pretty cool. However, at 7500 that is a hard pass, because you can buy a brand new one for less and get an arguably better top. But now, look what showed back up on Reverb. Listed by CMC Guitars, this was a Music Zoo custom order in Zodiac Burst finish. Which is really cool, because we documented the Zodiac Les Paul custom in this episode. Unfortunately, it met a bad fate, but the original run had interesting inlays, basically matching all the Zodiac signs. It was a very niche piece, but it's kind of grown on me over the years. So the Music Zoo had the bright idea that, hey, what if somebody doesn't like everything else about that, but likes the finish? So they did up their own. Now, I think they had this initially listed at, like, 8,000. So here it is on the rebound for a little bit less. And if you want one of the original Zodiacs, there is one on Reverb. It's sat here for two years at a premium price. Remember, these are like 8,000 brand new and a lot of people are like, ah, oh, that's a lot of money for this thing. <laughs> There's actually been a couple of them on the used market. They're interesting pieces of history. And obviously you get the abalone inlays. So it's there if you want it. And if anybody has one that's interested in trading for some other high-end Gibsons, I might be interested for my personal collection. That goes for the Bats and Flight Les Pauls too. Or honestly, anything interesting. Things like the Blue Quill Top Les Paul, Dave Mustaine Flying Vs, Richie Faulkner, the Lavender Sparkle, the BB King, anything high-end in the shop. I I'm just looking for some new stuff. Now, I do want to preference that I'm not really looking to do super ultra multi guitars for one. Just something to spice the show up and primarily Gibson. But hey, speaking of the Music Zoo, they happened to get a mod collection guitar in. So somebody probably traded this thing. And it's a natural finish with a humbucker in the neck, P90 in the bridge, ABR1 with a trapeze tailpiece, and it's a mahogany top. So that means that this probably started life as like a 54 reissue style custom. And then they <sighs> routed out the best part, the staple Alnico 5 pickup for a humbucker. But I remember this one because it's got the unique three ply headstock binding. It just makes the headstock look so different. Like here it is side by side to a normal custom with the five ply. But then moving on to the back, you've got one random wooden back plate, and then the other one's normal, but it's the natural finish with our Clusen style tuners. Then it's got the DS serial number 0080. As far as weird, quirky things, I mean, I didn't think that price was too bad, especially coming from a high name dealer. I think if they added the 54 reissue into the title of this one, it would help them sell it quicker. But this guitar really screams, I need a piezo on it. Next up, we got a really sweet 82 custom. If you do not want a Tom Murphy aged relic and you want the real deal, this thing's pretty fantastic. We had documented one similar to this a long time ago, but it's got the armware on the front revealing the maple top. We've got our Schaller strap locks. It still has the original heavily ambered over speed knobs. It's got the 3.2 pneumatic bridge, which is great. Luckily, still has the original 82 Tim Shaw PAFs. That's always a huge bonus, because usually when they get played this much, they've been modified even further. But then when you get to the back, it's actually relatively well taken care of. But what's interesting here is the clear coat has pretty much been removed in this whole section here. That's why this part is yellowed and then this part hasn't. Now, how do I know it's been removed through play? Because you can see the whiteness of the binding right there. Although it could have had like a big sticker over it and then they peeled it off. But I'm leaning more towards play wear here. Something rubbed up against this edge too. But then get a load of that headstock. This one's pretty well in stage four, I would say. Even the neck has rather attractive wear. This was somebody's lead guitar. But being in 82, it does not have the volute. But you did see that right. It still has the maple neck. So late 81 into 82, it's transitional. Occasionally, you can find a non-voluted maple neck. But your eyes do not deceive you. Those are the flip out winding crank tuners too. So that makes these Schaller strap locks rather unfortunate because this originally would have shipped with the diamond posi locks. But be ready to refret this guy. <laughs> That's some healthy fret wear. And our saddles are a little bit mangled up apparently. And normally missing a big section of the binding off the top of the headstock would be very bad. But it's stage four, so it doesn't matter. How much does this one cost? Eh, about 7,500. But the price on silver bursts has started to fall lately because this one from 2017 showed up for 4400 Now my bet is this probably won't still be available by the time this episode airs, but I clicked on this thinking, is that a vintage one in a modern case? Because it has that very, very lightly aged hue. This is my favorite version of silver burst. 
Then when I got to the headstock, seeing it so ambered, I was wondering, was this one of the original antique silver bursts? Because I wouldn't mind having one of those. But no, it doesn't look exactly the same. But these were made before the Adam Jones hype train went absolutely insane. Like this one's from 2016. So the finish was still underground before prices started to 2 to 3x. And nowadays, Gibson will custom made to measure these things anyways. But having one of the original 2016 runs, it'd be kind of cool to have on the show. Well, this one being from 2017, that also means the rich light fretboard, so keep that in mind. 2011 through early 2019, but this thing seems pretty clean and a decent option for someone if you don't mind a couple of dings on the top. All right, troglodytes, I think that's enough fun for tonight. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.